steak is what's for dinner tonight. Hello, Smoking Brothers family. I'm Ryan. We're here at Smoke Hollow with Mr. Marty Plute of Twisted Steel. Hey, everybody. Marty is actually one of, the, one of the top steak cookers in the world, and he's gonna help us make your backyard a great success cooking ribeyes. All right, Marty, we picked up some ribeyes from our local butcher at S, over in Esner's Custom Meat Processing uh, down in Kelso, Kelso, Missouri. Let's go ahead and show you what, show the audience what we do with the, for the backyard. Okay. Well, we're just gonna do minimal trimming. There's quite a bit of good meat up in this tail that we normally cut off, but there's no sense of it whenever we're throwing it in there for exactly good old, good old grilling steak, so. All right, so Marty marinated the competition steak, and I'm probably, knowing Marty, he left a few steps out of what he does for his normal backyard, his uh, comp, comp day, but he had me go grab his tenderizer for, for the backyard ones. All right, and then basically just a standard needle tenderizer, then we'll just, uh, we're not gonna get too much into it because they are really nice steaks. The one thing you do want to watch out with tenderizers, do not get your hand in the way of them because they show no mercy. So, not speaking from experience, but maybe speaking from experience. <laughs> All right. So you had a nice little clean cut for the backyard. Now what we're getting ready to do, we're gonna go ahead and season these steaks up. So now we're moved on, we've got them tenderized, Marty. Now one thing I have learned with cooking with you guys and watch you guys cooking, is you guys do a lot of layering. You guys do use several different stuff out there. Um, but this was your first year that you came out with Twisted Steel. You've been using it, it's been your own mix. You've been using it for the last couple of years. Right. And, but you still have some basics that you use to go along with it to give right. it a nice compliment. Yes, so. I mean, Twisted, this is a, a great finishing uh, rub. It's also, you know, for cooking too, but it doesn't have any salt in it content, so we still need a good SPG base awesome. layer. And yeah. the SPG that we chose to use today is no other but then Hotty Toddy Barbecue. Right. Mr. Ronald Barnes. That's right. We just do a generous layer on there. And if you guys notice he's up high with it and shaking down a little bit. You're gonna get seasoning a little bit everywhere, so make sure to do what we did is lay down a nice piece of foil so that whoever does the cleaning doesn't get mad at you that they're having to pick up seasoning all over the countertop. Again, not speaking from experience, but speaking from experience. Right. <laughs> so here we got a little Johnny Joseph. Johnny Joseph steak rub. It's a, it's a great first layer after the SPG, I find. And again, we'll do both sides. We're just, for this purpose, right. we're just we start on one side. That, that is, the, the, so far, the three names that we're getting ready, and we're gonna finish it off with a little Twisted Steel Steak <laughs> Appeal, guys. That is one thing when I was down there in Fort Worth, I, I heard all three of these names used several times on stage. Right. They complement each other very well. Now you notice guys, he patted that seasoning in. He didn't, he didn't go ahead and just press it in or he just did a nice little soft pat around it. And, and even though we, we say rub, you notice he did not rub that seasoning into the steak. Correct. All right, we're just gonna repeat. All right guys, we've got these steaks all seasoned up, so what, what's our next step here, Marty? I think we'll put them in a full pan and we'll get them up to room temp. Perfect. Let them sit here for a while and sweat it out, so. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of people don't really do. Sometimes it'll jump straight from the fridge right onto the grill. And, and it's always better to get that gradual raise in temperature on a steak. Am I correct, correct. on that? Correct. And so that's why Marty was saying we're going to throw them in the pan and set them aside. So with that said, we're going to let this sit for a little bit, rest, come up for room temperature, then it's cook time, boys and girls. All right, we've let our grill warm up. Right now we've got the sear station on our 30 Premier. What the sear station does, it provides, it takes two great American products and puts them into one. It uses our sear mate, and the sear mate connects the heat wave and the grill grates together into one piece. You set it on the grill, and the heat wave focuses the airflow coming up from your fire pot across those grill grates and creates a high temp outcome for steak cooking and high temperature cooking on other things. 
So what we got now is Marty the Man Plute is gonna be here, or he's gonna show you and walk you through a backyard cook along with the comp steak side by side. So let's come learn. Marty's dusting with a little duck fat. I know those grates are popping around 565, 570. Puts a nice little press down on the steak just to get it in good contact. Now he's taking the comp steak. And he's got a little weight that he's going to press down on that steak and cook with that. Now we got the lid closed. We're gonna go for about a minute and a half. Now Marty's actually watching his temperatures real close. And there's a certain, whenever you're doing competition steaks, you wanna be right exact. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a flip first, then a turn, then a flip, and then another turn. Real great spatula. Now he cleans the grates in between. For the backyard, you don't have to, but Marty is a perfectionist. But as you can tell, the way that ribeye was falling apart, this is why they tie theirs together for the competition. squirt a little spritz of duck fat and now we're turning it's gonna do a little temp to actually get a speck off of there is what he's using the meat throat throw for a little pepper kernel Real great spatula it goes right in between the grates of it. Marty's gonna clean it again. A little spritz of the duck fat again. Now it's time for the quarter turn. It's gonna be ugly. Not too bad. Put his weight back on top. This will be the last turn, or last flip. Who says you can't do hash marks on, <laughs> on a gas grill. grill or belt grill? All right, we're getting ready to pull these off. The main thing you want to know about steaks is they do raise in temperature after you pull them off, but most importantly, you want to cook to temperature, not to time. Marty's getting ready to pull these off at 135. He's made a little foil pack to put them in. You ready? Yep. He's grabbing the ribeye steak first, the backyard. He's gonna fold, fold it up and tent it. 
Now Marty's gonna spritz it with a little bit, or dice it with a little bit more butter. Again, I mean, you don't have to do this at home. This is just something that, that uh, it's hard to take it out of Marty because he's such a perfectionist. And he's gonna come back with a little bit more seasoning on top. <clears throat> little over for competition, but it's gonna be a good eater. Yeah. Now, we did leave that one tented a little longer, so it jumped up in temp a little bit on us. Well, as you can tell, I'm, I'm ready to wrap this video up so we can get to eating steak. So, like I said, I wanna thank Marty for coming down and helping us cook on steaks. I really appreciate it, especially bringing down some twisted steel with us and your expertise. Um, we could not have done this steak cook off without you. And quite honestly, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, and uh, it's been a, a little bit one of those things where I've learned a lot today, and I hope you guys have too. So, from our family to your family, Steak is what's for dinner tonight.